Hi everyone, it's Miss Debbie. The years before Jesus was born were really hard for the Israelites. They had emperors and warriors and foreign leaders come into their promised land all the time and cause trouble for them. They forced the Israelites to worship other gods and eat food they weren't supposed to and turn away from their one true God. If they didn't, they were tortured. That means they were hurt or even sometimes killed. But they still held on to their hope that God would save them, would send them a Messiah. But it was a long, long wait and they were losing heart. So to keep up their hope, they would look back into their history to a time when God saved them. And tonight's story is one of those times. It helped them take heart. Now, I need your help for tonight's story. If you made a musical instrument, a tambourine or a drum or something with jingle bells on it, we need your help to play some music with us tonight. I want you to listen carefully. And when you hear me say, the sound of the trumpets and the harps and the flutes and all the musical instruments. I want you to play yours, okay? So you have to listen carefully. All right, let's get started. A long time ago, about 600 years before Jesus was born, the Israelites were captured and taken from their homes to a foreign land called Babylon. Home of the fiery furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar was a very powerful king. He was also very rich. He was so rich that he had a statue built that was 90 feet tall. 90 feet it was made of gold and bronze and steel and iron. He commanded all his officials to gather together when the statue was completed. And so all the princes and governors and judges and magistrates and advisors and every other important person in Babylon gathered in front of the ginormous golden statue. Then an announcement was read. People of every nation, race, and language living in Babylon. When you hear the sound of the trumpet and the flute and the harp and all the other musical instruments, you must bow down and worship King Nebuchadnezzar's golden statue. If you don't, you will be thrown into the fiery furnace. So as soon as the people of every nation, race, and language heard the sounds of the trumpets, the flutes, the harps, and all the other musical instruments, they bowed down and worshipped the golden statue. Well, not all the people. Since there were so many people of every nation, race, and language living in Babylon, they didn't always get along with each other. And two of the people who didn't like the Israelites came to King Nebuchadnezzar. 
they greeted him. May you live forever, great king. You have commanded that all the people of every nation, race, and language living in Babylon must bow down and worship your golden statue whenever they hear the sound of the trumpets, the flutes, the harps, and all the other musical instruments, or be thrown into the fiery furnace. But there are certain men from Israel named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they will not bow down and worship your golden statue. When King Nebuchadnezzar heard this news, he was furious. Bring them to me immediately. King Nebuchadnezzar was mad. Is it true that you refuse to bow down and worship my golden statue? When you hear the sound of the trumpets, the flutes, the harps, and all the other musical instruments, I'll give you one last chance. When you hear the sound of the trumpets, the flutes, the harps, and all the other musical instruments, you must bow down and worship, or I will have you thrown into the flaming, fiery furnace. What god can save you then? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king. We do not need to defend ourselves before you. Our God can save us if he chooses. But even if he doesn't, we will not worship your golden statue. Mm -mm. King Nebuchadnezzar got even angrier and he ordered the fiery furnace to be turned up seven times hotter than normal. Then he ordered the guards to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them in. But then an amazing thing happened. King Nebuchadnezzar looked into the furnace and couldn't believe what he saw. He said to the guard, Wait, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were tied up, and now they're free, and I see four men in there, and they're all walking around, and they're not on fire. They're not burning up. Why are they walking around free? And this fourth man looks like a, a, a god. King Nebuchadnezzar was so astonished that he called to them, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out of the fire. And then, in front of all the princes and governors and judges and magistrates and advisors and every other important person in Babylon, the three men walked out of the fiery furnace, unharmed. Not a hair on their heads had been burned, and their clothes didn't even smell like fire. Then King Nebuchadnezzar praised the God of Israel. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They trusted their God, and he sent an angel to save them. They were faithful to their God and refused to worship any other, even risking their own lives. Today, I issue a new decree to the people of every nation, race, and language living in Babylon. No one shall even say one word against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego under penalty of death because no other God is more powerful. No other God 
could save people like this. Ooh, fiery furnace, angels. Ooh, really good story. And your music was perfect, right on time, whenever we had trumpets or flutes or harps. Good job, good job. You did a great job on those, on those instruments. Awesome. So if telling someone to take heart means to encourage them to be brave and, and keep up hope, then this was a really good story for all of the people who came afterwards. This is a really, this is a really old, old story. But remembering these times and all the other times that, that God has saved the Jewish people, they were able to keep hoping and trusting whenever they had tough times, whenever they were in trouble, like in a fiery furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar was really powerful. Babylon was a very big city and he was in charge of a lot. And so whenever he said something, it became the law and everyone was expected to obey. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego couldn't obey his laws without breaking God's laws. So do you remember when Moses went up the mountain and he brought down the Ten Commandments and those big stone tablets? The first commandment is, thou shalt have no other gods but me. And the second one is, don't make idols. Don't worship golden statues. No. Mm -mm. No. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew all Ten Commandments by heart. And so they were willing to stand up and defy King Nebuchadnezzar's laws so that they wouldn't break God's laws. This story is found in the third chapter of Daniel. And it helped the Jews who lived hundreds of years later remember that they could be strong and courageous. They could take heart and trust God. And stories like this are told over and over again, and now we share them with you so that you'll remember that you can take heart and have hope. See you next time.